Hi, this is Jonathan Ross, and today we're going to make protein power balls. Now, this recipe is originally from Terry Gentis at terrygentis.com, and I've been using it for over a decade. It's really helpful for when you're just on the go and you need good nutrition. So what we have is all the ingredients here, and it's really easy because they're all raw, and all we have to do is chuck them into a food processor, and then whip it up, roll it into balls, and then roll them in sesame seeds or hemp seeds, and then we're good to go. So I'm just gonna chuck everything into the food processor. Now what we do with this, we start with various combinations of nuts. And I like different combinations, and I've varied the recipe here and there over the years. I'm starting with pecans. I'm gonna throw in some walnuts next. And as far as the amounts, I've learned over the years to just kind of ballpark it and eyeball it. I only use a measuring cup, so I just have a relative idea of approximately how much I'm throwing in. I'm really not that worried about exactly how much of each ingredient that I'm getting. I'm just trying to mix as many in. Now, next I'm gonna use cashew meal. So I get yet a third variety of nut in, in here. So I'm gonna really up the nutritional variety and the nutritional value. So we have different essential fats and different qualities of foods that come in when we have that variety. So variety is, really is the spice of life and it's also for better nutrition. Next up is gonna be some wheat germ. So th there's gonna be natural raw wheat germ. So when you have a grain, a grain contains a number of things that are very healthy and beneficial that we often get rid of in processing of traditional grains to make bread. And what we have here is wheat germ, and this is a very healthy part of the grain. So I'm gonna use about maybe three quarters of a cup or so, and I'm just gonna ballpark it, leave it there. So next up is oat bran, and again, that's an, it's gonna be another part of the grain that is gonna be healthy. So we have oats here, but we're using the bran part of the starch. There we go. Put that in. And you can see I'm just ballparking the amount, so this is actually really quick once you get everything out and put together. Next up is ground flax seeds. Always a good addition for some essential fats to almost any recipe, including salads or even just to sprinkle it on cereal or even to sprinkle on top of meats. So I'm going to throw that in. Put a little of that in there. Next up will be the coconut. We're gonna put some unsweetened coconut. Really important that we minimize the sugars that we add to our life, so we're gonna use unsweetened coconut only. And this package is almost done, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make life easy, dump that in there. And then I really like coconut, so I'm gonna add a little bit more from another new package. I'm gonna throw a little more in. I didn't like coconut growing up, but as I've become older, in my adult years, I've learned to really love it. Next up, we're gonna use dried fruit, but this is dried fruit that's really just dried fruit. There's no sugar added to it. So when you're using dried fruit and you see it's kind of wet and sticky, that's a really clear indication that it's had sugar added to it, which I'm not really sure why we ever do that, except for the fact that we seem to have to add sugar to everything. So this really is, it's very light and it's not sticky. So it is actually just dried fruit. You can use a variety of dried fruit. In this case, I'm using dried raspberries. You could use uh, apricots, lychees, uh, raisins, whatever you like, just a, a little bit of dried fruit. Next, I'm gonna put in the cocoa powder. Now, this is non-alkali processed, unsweetened cocoa powder, and that's the healthiest form of cocoa powder that you can use, because when you use non-alkali processed, it keeps some of the beneficial properties that we like in chocolate intact inside of the cocoa mix. So I'm just gonna do one scoop in there. And then I'm also gonna throw in, just for a little bit of texture, an additional form of coconut called cocoa nibs. So these have a little bit of that shell property from the cocoa bean, and what we'll find when you eat these is that when you put these in, you get a little bit of that ni it, nice crunchy kind of texture, but it still adds, again, some of the properties of the healthy, unadulterated cocoa. Now I usually will put in some form of wild card, and today's wild card is gonna be a green superfood mix, and I'm also gonna put in something called a, called a salad booster. This has just a bunch of seaweed and different things. I'm just gonna throw some of that in there. I, I do that because any recipe you've been using for 10 years or more, you have to keep it a little bit different. So you'll see that the original recipe that I use, I've mixed it up a little bit, and I don't, I'm not sticking quite to that. That's because I vary things every single time I make it, so they never get boring. So I'm always enjoying them when I'm eating them. And again, I use these when I'm at my most busy days because you'll have little balls that you just use and you're ready and you can just grab them and go. And that's the beauty of it is there's really no need to mess with having to prepare anything. So for one of my meals during my busiest time of the week when I'm training a lot of clients, teaching classes and 
when I'm also maybe doing a lot of writing or traveling to speak, I grab three, maybe four of these if I need an extra high calorie meal, and then I, maybe an apple or a piece of fruit afterwards. Make sure you have some water with it because they are kind of chewy, and then done, that's a meal, and there's no prep time at all. I make them about once every week and a half, and I have a batch that lasts for about that long. So now, once I've put all the ingredients into the food processor, I'm gonna turn on the food processor, and I'm not gonna make you listen to that, so we're gonna pause it, while we run that, I'll come back and show you how we take the next step. Okay, we're back. Protein Power Balls Part 2. As you see, everything has now been processed in the food processor, so it's this fine powder and it's a little bit moist, which is really good, and that comes from the fats in the nuts. Next, what we would do is take peanut butter, but you could use any other nut butter if you prefer almond butter or cashew butter or any other nut butter. Sometimes I'll throw in a little tahini as well. Just, I really like Middle Eastern food. And again, anything I do this often, I eat it almost every day during my busy stays during the week. And then uh, I'll just wanna make sure I'm not getting tired of it and I don't find it to be boring. So what I'm gonna do is mix up the nut butters that I use from time to time. So today, I'm just gonna use peanut butter and keep things nice and simple. And we're just gonna put, put all the peanut butter in. Now you'll see in the recipe, there's an exact amount that goes along with this. But again, I've learned over the years to just eyeball it. When you're having to measure everything out, it just adds a lot of time. So once you're comfortable making a recipe, you don't have to measure everything out. And that's really the beauty of learning to cook. I did not know how to cook growing up. It's not something that I was very good at, and when I started to eat healthy, to me, eating healthy is predicated upon some ability to know how to prepare meals. You don't have to know how to prepare exquisite meals and really intricate, difficult meals with a lot of steps, but a certain minimum level of competence with meal preparation is essential. So once you're comfortable just knowing how to kind of manipulate food a little bit, it really opens up the options for you and your quality of life and your ability to provide meals for yourself and those that you love that are enjoyable and nutritious. So I've put the peanut butter in and you just want to make sure you get enough that when you start to run the food processor again now that everything blends well and it gets sticky enough that you can roll it into balls and then we're going to put it into this mix. I actually have mixed sesame seeds along with hemp seeds today. So sometimes I do just sesame, sometimes just hemp, but again keeping it fresh and introducing variety to avoid boredom and having my taste buds get bored of what I'm eating. So today I'm using a mix of sesame seeds and hemp seeds. So once again, we'll run the food processor and come back and show you the step of rolling them into balls and you'll see how quick and easy this is. Protein Power Balls, step three. We've combined all of our raw ingredients into the food processor, ground all of those up. Now we've put the peanut butter in, ground that up, and now comes the fun part, we get to play in the mud. So we take all of your ground up ingredients with the peanut butter or other nut butter out of the food processor. We dump it all into a big bowl and you'll see how it comes out. It's like a big mess. So now we take the blade out, get any, any residual ingredients off of there and then out of the container, put them inside, just put that out of the way. And now what we get to do is play in the mud. It can be sometimes helpful to take your spatula that comes with most food processors and just kind of carve it up a little bit so you'll see that it's this mushy looking brown sort of yummy looking mess and we get to play in it. Now what we do, really easy, make sure your hands are clean of course, you grab a chunk of it, you start to roll it into a ball with your hands, just take your hands, roll it into a ball. You have your bowl of sesame seeds or hemp seeds sitting next to you. In this case, it's a mix of the two and just roll it around and the sesame seeds or hemp seeds will stick to the outer surface of the ball. So there we go. So we do one, we do the other, keep going, grab a little handful. You can adjust the size based on your preference. Usually the serving size for me when I'm having a meal, it's around three. Sometimes if I'm really hungry and having a lot of activity on a given day and I need a little bit of extra calories, I'll throw in a fourth one and I'll eat four. So usually depending on your exact ingredients and the size that you make the balls, but each individual ball could be anywhere from 90 to maybe 110 or 120 calories. So they are quite calorie dense by design. They're really meant to be a meal. When I eat one of these or if I eat three or four of them, I'm designing that as a meal. I'm expecting that to be a meal along with a piece of fruit and I don't need to eat again for a little while. If I just need a really quick snack, just a little hungry and just need a little something to sustain me, I can only have one or two. So you can have these whenever you like. Again, 
It's really handy, really handy because it takes no cooking. The prep time is all at once. It takes about maybe 40 to 45 minutes to do it all at once. And then once you've done it, you've got a batch that will last you about a week and a half or maybe longer, maybe a little less long. Depends on how many people you have in your house and how popular they get. So I encourage you to try out your protein power balls. Enjoy, roll them, shove them in your mouth, eat them, and in good health, enjoy great nutrition.